Good morning, everyone. Today's the day. After months and months of prep and waiting, it's finally time to start lime washing the house. But first, I got to power wash it. So today, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. I bought an extendable 20 foot extension for my power washer. It comes with a harness that's going to allow me to get all the way up there without, hopefully without having to use any sort of ladder or scaffolding. I'll get as much as I can done today. Hopefully the whole front of the house, the, the front is where I'm gonna start. Some people might think, hey, why don't you start somewhere inconspicuous? No, we wanna go big. I wanna start in the front because we have all this landscaping to put in and then rocks to put in there. And then we're gonna do something fantastic with lighting that I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit. I don't wanna spill the beans on that one too quick, but it's gonna be amazing. With this landscaping, the White House and the lights, I, we're going to totally transform this house. It's going to be so beautiful. But step one, power washing. Let's get to it. My first step was to remove all the downspouts around the house and prepare for power washing. Our gutter system is a DIY disaster installed by the previous owners, so we'll be getting it professionally replaced during this lime wash project. Power washing with a 20 foot extension is not for the faint of heart. That thing will whip you around real good if you don't keep a tight grip. Unfortunately, on this first face, I didn't hit all of the upper bricks, so I had to do it twice. There's a sand patina on the bricks that took some careful attention to remove. It's end of day one for the prep for uh, lime washing. I power wash this face and that face right there with that uh, window with the arch window. That looks really good. Now that had two areas of black algae coming down. So that really cleaned up nicely. Now I, I wanted to show you what took so long. I had to do this face twice. This is the one I started with. And with the extension, with that 20 foot extension, which was a little hard to control. And at first I thought I could go kind of quick, but then I realized I had to clean with a spray like this just as big as the brick. Every single brick had to be cleaned individually because if you look on here, this is a sand patina. Every single brick has it and it has to come off. Again, this face is not done, but if you come around here, you'll see now these are all beautifully cleaned. All that patina is gone. Now it's clean. I'll be doing it on all the other faces and then uh, starting the lime wash. So I can't wait. This looks better if we were keeping the house brick. I mean, this is what makes, I think our brick looks look good. This little patina softens the brick color a little bit. It does. But I, I'm just a little worried that this loose sand is gonna get in the way of the and, lime wash. And it's, yeah, and it's not going to be uh, it's not visible gonna, yeah, anymore. It's not gonna matter with the lime wash anyway, so I might as well take the extra few hours yeah. per wall and clean it right and have this really beautifully prepped for lime wash absorption, yeah. which is going to be awesome. I'm really pleased with that wall because it looked terrible before with that black line coming down there. And here is both walls together. You can see yeah, the with the patina and non-patina. <laughs> Good job, my babes. Thank you, my babes. Now let's talk lime wash. The cheapest way to do this is to buy powdered hydrated lime and mix it with water. The downside is that it only comes in one color, pure white. A more expensive but more flexible option is to buy concentrated lime paint. That's what we did. And yes, lime wash is technically a paint, though it acts entirely different than latex or other paints you may be familiar with. Its most critical advantage for brick is that lime wash allows the brick to breathe, something latex paint can't do. Concentrated lime wash comes the consistency of sour cream, but before mixing it with more water, it must first be mixed to an even consistency as the water it has in it wants to separate from the lime. We went with 50% dilution, that's two parts Parts lime wash paint to one part water. And yes, I said that correctly. 100% dilution would be a one to one ratio. Dilution ratio and mix ratio are different things. Once we had our paint diluted and mixed, it was time to start lime washing. For the first coat on the first section, I ended up thinning even further, but that turned out to be unnecessary. So let's just pretend everything was done with 50% dilution. This stuff goes on real easy with a masonry brush. Day two and coat two, I used the thicker 50% dilution and achieved the opaque look we wanted. Lime wash becomes opaque as it dries, so you don't immediately know how it's going to look. Day two, almost done with coat two, and it's looking amazing. You can really see the difference. Honden worked down here this morning. I worked up there, so this and this is done. This band here has not been done. And just for comparison, this is a wet area right here. So that's done, but it will turn opaque in about an hour or so. It really looks amazing. 
We made the choice yesterday to do two coats. We did a, a, a watery thin first coat with a big brush just to get a good base coat and let it drink into the brick. And that was easier to get it into the deep grout lines that this brick has. On this second coat, I'm not using that big brush because it's very sloppy. I'm using just a regular, a regular big paintbrush, like one you'd use in uh, inside a house on a wall or you know wherever. That works very well. Worcester is the best brand for those. Yep. <laughs> the shrimp is smoking. Worcester is the best brand for that. And we just get that thing saturated and mushed up and nice and soft. And it holds a ton of paint and it makes it a lot easier. It's it, The process is slow to be sure, but hey, you, you got one shot at this and it's gonna last for a very long time. So it's worth putting in the extra effort, just like it was worth putting in the extra effort to power wash every single brick and get all that patina off. We're taking a lot of care and a lot of pride in this job because the front of this house, when we're done, is going to look amazing with the landscaping, the rocks, the lights, everything else we're gonna do. And you're gonna be seeing it all right here. Welcome to day three of our lime washing. Today, I'm gonna try something a little different. Yesterday, uh, yesterday and the day before, I used a brush for both coats, which worked fine. It's just a little time consuming. So today I wanna to try something a little different. I'm gonna use the sprayer. This is an old sprayer, old Wagner that I have. I don't use it for paint anymore, so I think it'll be perfect for this application. Now I'm going to be doing this uh, with a 50% dilution, which is still pretty watery, and I'm just gonna see how it goes on. Now, using this, I'm also gonna be using safety glasses, which give a little bit better coverage than my other glasses, and I'm going to use this uh, respirator. This is not a this dust mask, really. If I were doing this inside, I would use a respirator. But because I'm outside and there is wind, this should be good enough. And now the reason I'm doing that is because lime is pretty nasty stuff. It is very alkaline. It's the opposite of an acid. It's got a pH of about 12 or 13, I think, which is really basic. And what that means is it can burn your skin. Now I've had it on my hands for two days. It hasn't burned me, but it has dried them out so much that once I've cleaned them, they're white again. They're white with dead skin, which is fine. I can put hand lotion on, but you don't want to get that in your eyes and you certainly don't want to breathe that vapor in into your lungs. So yesterday I didn't need any PPE. I did wear my regular glasses, but I didn't need to wear anything uh, for my mouth because using a brush is not going to create vapor that I'm going to inhale and it's very unlikely that a drop is gonna get past my glasses and into my eyes. But with this sprayer, it's very likely that that's gonna happen. And in fact, I'm expecting these to be all white after a while with the wind. So gotta keep that stuff away from your tender parts. Skin, fine, you can use lotion. There's some confusion about how many coats to put on. On the bucket that we have here, it says right here, applied easily as a one coat process, no primer that need, uh, needed, to instantly create an authentic lime wash finish equal to the look of historic Europe. Well, what that means is lime wash finish. Also, they're expecting people to, to distress. If you want an opaque finish, like we want, it's not a one step or a one coat process. And we learned that by reading the technical data sheet, which gives altogether different information. It gives different information on dilution levels, plus it says it's at least a two or a three coat process to do that. We've determined yesterday that it can be done perfectly in two coats. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We're just going to try to recreate what we did yesterday and the day before with a paint sprayer because I think if we can do that, it's going to speed up the process because it, it is fairly time consuming to do it with a brush, but you get the results you want. But first, uh, I've already power washed this this morning. It's still a little bit damp. I'm just going to make it a little bit more damp. Not dripping, but I'm just going to spray it with the hose. Good girls. Come here, Pepper. Come here, Pepper. Good girl, Pepper. I'll breathe again when I'm done. <laughs> All right, I'm going back to brush because the issue with the sprayer is that it's not getting enough lime into
into the grout areas. And if I hold the sprayer long enough to get the grout properly covered, then it's putting too much on the brick and it's pooling. Yeah, I will pull a little back so you guys can see where the... You, you can see where the darker area is and then where he's working with now is whiter with the grout lines. Yeah, when this dries, the brick will get more opaque and whitish but that grout is still gonna stay darker and it's gonna look really contrasty and weird. And it's gonna make the second coat that much harder. So it's better just to do it this way. gable I got paint on the shingles but it wasn't a problem I just brought a hose up the ladder when I was done and rinsed the roof for tougher stains a small metal brush will help loosen the lime <laughs> are you done picking I can see it ah, I'll clean it up for you <laughs> I want to show you guys my technique that I've developed after four Three. How many days has it been? Sunday, but yeah, four, four long days of work. <laughs> Believe me, that's enough to develop my technique. I use this masonry brush and I get it fully loaded. <laughs> and I come up here and I go like this, back and forth, pressing it in so I get these drips. Anything that goes too far down, I just do that too so it doesn't create a big mess. And after a few back and forths, it creates the drips wherever there's uh, vertical grout lines. And then I come down and for about one, two, three, four, five, anywhere from four to six to seven, kind of depending on how wide I'm going, I just start doing this on all the verticals. And then once the verticals are done, then I come back and just do this again. This corner makes it a little bit odd. Hang on, let me just get that corner. <laughs> Normally there's not a corner. And then I just come back and do the horizontals again. And all I'm doing is focusing on the grout. And by doing so, I, by default, will get the faces done. I'm not so worried, or I mean, I'm not at all worried about getting the lime on the windows because it'll just hose off. I'll do that in a few days once this has permanently calcified. Oh yeah, let's talk about one more thing. It's going to be a little bit controversial. <laughs> Topic again about the lime wash. Is lime wash a paint? Or... <laughs> yeah. So we'll, <laughs> ask the question. we'll ask the question. Yeah. Is, is lime, lime wash, wash paint? a paint is, is or lime not? Wash paint? So by now you've all made your guesses. And the answer is, yes it is. By the technical definition of paint, paint. Yeah. it is a paint. Any sort of thin surface covering on any sort of substrate like wall, ceiling, floor, that leaves either a decorative or protective coating behind. Exactly. Film, coating, something like that. So this does meet the definition because it leaves a calcified coating of lime. And that is why it is known as, it. yeah, it is known as paint in majority of the world, <laughs> definitely in construction world. So is it a little controversial fun fact for you guys? It's just when, probably when America or maybe other countries developed different types of paint, lime washing became associated with a lower class because paint was expensive. So there is an expression, too proud to lime wash, too poor to paint. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Beauty of lime wash is that 
like in Turkey, we even apply it to the trees because it helps with with um, protecting them, basically. I'm also going to be live washing this, but I'm going to do that later when I'm done walking all over. I am racing bad weather here. In fact, every day I painted, I had a rain delay, and some days were total washouts. As long as I had lime on the wall for a few hours, it held up fine to the rain. On this last day, we had some biblical rains, and it wore off the lime wash in a couple of spots, but nothing major considering that was just the first coat in those places. Now check out this recap of where we're at, and stay tuned for the big reveal. My wife and I see very different things when we look at our house. She sees beauty where I see eye-stabbing ugliness because I don't like red brick at all. But I'm a married man who's learned that the secret to living is a happy shrimp, so I kept my big mouth shut and agreed that the brick looked wonderful. To my surprise, she agreed with my suggestion to lime wash the house. Turns out lime wash is quite the rage in her native Turkey and has been for thousands of years. Lime washing our house is a big job for one middle-aged guy, but where there's a wife, there's a way, so we'll figure it out together. First, my babes and I cleaned out the front garden beds with a hoe, a shovel, and two creaking backs. With the weed rebellion quashed, I fired up my power washer and battled it and the house as I wrangled a 20-foot telescoping wand that felt like wrestling a king cobra hopped up on goofballs. Now let's talk lime wash. Lime wash is a type of paint, but it's different than the paint you're used to. Unlike latex and most other paints that form a film over the surface they're applied to, lime wash gets drawn into the brick where it calcifies into insoluble calcium carbonate. In layman's terms, water won't dissolve the lime after calcification. The lime wash I'm using comes as a concentrated goop with the consistency of sour cream and must be diluted before use. There's a lot of contradictory information about dilution ratios and how many coats of lime wash to apply because there are so many finishes it can give. From translucent to distressed to the finish I'm after, opaque. To fully hide the brick color, two coats will do with a dilution ratio ratio of 50%, or two parts lime wash concentrate to one part water. I started in front on the most prominent face because I eat stress for breakfast and operate best when I'm a half step from disaster. But hey, humans have been lime washing at least since the time of Egyptian pharaohs, so if those sandal wearing pyramid builders could do it, so can I. I used a large masonry brush which slopped on a ton of lime wash with each brush load. On that first face, the shrimp joined in the fun and after a couple of thunderstorms and rain delays, our sun got in on the action as well so we could finish before dark. Lime wash goes on translucent but turns opaque as it dries. I'd read that lime wash could be sprayed on, so for the next face, I gave it a shot. And there was hope, at first, but the hope turned to nope when I realized that the sprayer just wasn't getting enough paint into the grout, and by the time I did get enough, I totally oversprayed the brick. I went back over the sprayed area with a brush and carried on from there with a the masonry brush. Lime washing this house is immensely satisfying, and each stroke of the masonry brush brings me closer to the brick house of my dreams. My babes and I have big things planned for the front of the house, and this lime wash is just the beginning. Stay tuned, because you're not gonna believe what's coming next.